you look at technology for systematizing and automating invention over time, and I'm not just talking about the last five or ten years, you'll see that that technology is actually enabling inventors to engage in design at higher and higher levels of the waterfall and leave the lower levels down to technology to perform. So let's go way back, Stone Age. There's no design, just use. If you wanted to chop down a tree, you used your hands, you used the rock. You didn't design the rock, you found it, and you just used it. There was no design yet. Well, then maybe you use the rock to chop down a tree, to carve it into a tool. Now you've engaged in some design, but it's physical design and construction. And often those two might actually be merged together in one step. You might just build something without designing it ahead of time. Fast forward a bit to the industrial age. We started to automate and systematize processes of physical design and construction. Even before the industrial age, rise of guilds, communities of people who have common skills that they share in building things of a certain type. And then we go to the assembly line, technologies that you can use to take an existing physical design that an inventor has created and build it automatically. And by automatically, I mean without engaging in any additional inventive or creative effort. And again, looking to patent law, my other field, uh, there's an old case from late 19th century which says um, invention ends where the uh, conception ends and the work of the mechanic begins. So once we had techniques in place and technology like the assembly line, other automated manufacturing technologies in place. To be an inventor, you no longer had to be a builder, someone who knew how to actually build your invention. All you needed to know how to do was how to design it, maybe write up a design, write a specification of it, drawings of it, and then hand that off to a builder. Whether that builder used manual techniques or automated technology, uh, you could rest assured that your invention could be built automatically without you having to do it. Move forward to the information age, we're still in it. Computers, at least in a wide range of, for a wide range of problems, have automated physical design and construction. If you're a computer programmer and you want to create some software for controlling the brakes of a car, you can just write a program describing what you want that software to do, and then compile it. What does the compiler do? It builds, we don't often think of it as physically building software, but that's what it does. It might burn it into a ROM or a chip. It might just store it in a memory that goes into a car. All you've done is described what you want the software to do. That's the essence of functional design. And you use the computer to build now this anti-lock brake controller that does it. This is something that I find lots of computer scientists, other people, argue with me about. So I spent a lot of time on it in the book, making this claim that computers have automated functional, uh, physical design. But if you're a computer programmer, you spend your days just engaged in this higher level task of functional design. And the technologies that I showed you earlier are now going one step higher. I mentioned at the beginning John Koza and the controller that he created using genetic programming. Well, genetic programming is a technique for automatically generating computer programs. How does it work? You provide the genetic programming software with a problem definition, or you could view it as a set of requirements, and it automatically generates a computer program at this level lower. So now with the latest developments in invention automation technology, inventors no longer have to engage in any of these lower levels of design. They can just focus on the more abstract tasks of problem definition, requirements analysis, and leave it to computer technology to perform the rest of it for them automatically.
So in this long view of invention automation, you can see that every time there's a new development, the trend, the overall trend, is for the next development in invention automation to move up higher in the waterfall, automate a higher level, and thereby free inventors to just engage in even more abstract tasks. Yes? So to be clear, part of what's going on is because the lower bits of the waterfall are becoming uh, faster and cheaper to do, you can do them more times. Yes. And, and, and then feed the results back into your design. That's correct. 